name's Paul, I'm 45 and I live in Essex. Um, and what this basically is, is a video vlog of me going to be travelling around Australia. I ain't quite decided what we're going to call it yet, so any good suggestions which don't involve swear words would be good. But yeah, I mean, this whole idea come about, I was sitting around my brother-in-law's, we're having a barbie, and a very good friend of his, Lee, was there and he said to me god paul it goes everything you do just seems to turn to chaos everything if goes wrong for you so you know you've got to film it out in australia because it is going to be hilarious just watching you stumble from one chaotic situation into another so i thought you know what that ain't a bad idea actually so what we've done is we've got out and we bought some cameras and we're going to be getting some other bits of equipment but that will come along later on in the videos and the whole idea is is to go out there get a vehicle to travel around in and off we go traveling meeting people going places and you know just generally trying not to have everything fall apart on me it probably is gonna i mean if anything in my life is to go by Knowing me, I'm going to go out, probably break down, car catches fire in the middle of the outback, I'm stranded, um, and then you'll be basically watching a film of me probably dead in the middle of the outback. Hopefully not. That is not my intention. I want to be able to do this, get out there, have some really good fun, hopefully make you guys really laugh, you know. Um, but whatever you see, it's just going to be natural. Nothing is going to be staged. Nothing is going to be put on for show for cameras. It is just going to be me... Be me, which generally means things are going to go wrong. So I'm over at Fairview Park, um, basically just to have a little go of the camera drone, getting used to practicing using that. Um, this is the third one so far. Uh, the first one, one of the motors failed on it, so we took it back up to the unique flight centre. Uh, in Romford and they gave me a new drone um, I thought they just swapped out the motor so I didn't recalibrate it took it up and yeah it just flew off and it flew into that tree down there uh, it's about 45 mile an hour and yeah there was bits of uh, carbon fiber and plastic just flying everywhere so we've taken it back to them again um, and mate Perry unique superstar mate you have done me proud um, yeah he took it and he used the two drones and rebuilt one out of the two and yeah we got it over here and we're just uh, having a little test flight on it now so we're going to see what he can do so we've got the drone flying it's up in the air we've uh, put the legs up and as you can see it's pretty stable um, on the controller it gives you a view of where the camera is which is pretty cool and the whole thing's designed to be pretty autonomous so you know it's it's there to sort of help you take photos and film not to be sort of like some ace drone pilot a lot of it on it would do it itself so we're going to practice a few of the things now so as you can see now the drone is now going to start orbiting me and it should stay at that height following me which is pretty cool. So I'm not touching the controllers at the moment, it's just doing this on its own. So yeah, pretty pleased about that one, that works, cool. Yeah, so another pretty cool feature with this is the auto land uh, on it. Now, as you will see, over in the distance that little black dot that is my drone so what we're going to do now is put it in to land okay so on here you'll see there's a little switch right at the far end that says home on it so we're going to flick that and now we're going to watch what it does see i'm not touching the control panel and it's just going to come back to me. The legs are going to come down. And the old girl is going to come into land.
and it shut off. Cool. Now, the reason why that's pretty good, if you get sort of uh, disorientated in the direction it's going in, if you're a bit worried about some, well, anything really, and you just want to get your drone back home to land, flick that, and as you can see, it's come back and it's brought the legs down and it's landed. Again, little features like this are going to help me uh, doing some, doing the filming bits that I want. As I said, I'm not a drone pilot, don't profess to be one, don't really want to be one, but as I said, little bits like that, they're going to help. So really, it's just a bit of an introduction of my camera equipment really and what I'm using. So I know it's a bit nerdy, but you know, we have to do these things sometimes, don't we? And to be honest with you, it is a bit fun flying it. I do like that quite a lot. So, cool. At this moment in time we're at uh, Taipei Business Lounge. We got off our flight, so uh, it's only about a couple of hours ago. So we just had a bit of food here. Um, yeah, we've just been chilling out, watching Netflix on my laptop, um, getting a bit of food. And I think in around about an hour's time we've got a flight to start boarding our flight to Sydney. So uh, flight over wasn't too bad. Um, food weren't all that to be quite honest with you. In fact, better. Um, but then again, it's food on an airplane. What do you expect? <coughs> Although the food here wasn't too bad. Um, fried rice. They've got some pickled egg things, which again wasn't really my cup of tea, but I thought I'd try them anyway. And nice touch. They've got a whole fridge just full of beer. which I've indulged in a couple of them at the moment. So in a minute we'll take a little walk about um, to sort of maybe show you the lounge, see what it is. So yeah, it ain't been too bad so far. On the main flight over, slept quite the, well, slept most of the way. Um, in flight entertainment, I was hoping for some decent, decent films, but it was a bit more like glorified Netflix. Um, so yeah. Um, 
put was it the Black Panther on, I think I got about halfway through that before I decided to go to Kip. And that sort of woke me up when it was breakfast time. And I had a sausage, there was an omelette which they had put um, tomato soup over. I don't quite get that. Smart soup and an omelette. Must be a Chinese thing. Um, again, I had a couple of apples of it, weren't too bad. But again, said most slept most of the way. Oh, the seats were nice. Um, they sort of reclined all the way back down. And yeah, quite enjoyed them, um, actually. Just for once, I'd get a bit of sleep on a plane was nice. Um, so I'm going to take a little walk around in a minute. Just uh, show you the lounge, see what you think of it. Cool. Right, day one, Australia. Um, go have a quick look around to show you my room, which as you can see, isn't a lot, but it's a hostel and it is pretty cheap and that's what we want at the moment. So, so somewhere to put our stuff and to sort of like get a nice, good night's kit, which actually weren't too bad, but I think that might have been a jet lag. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna have a little walk about, just uh, check a few places out. We're going to meet my mate Aaron later on. Uh, at a bar, so I don't know if there'll be much filming done then because we're probably going to be hammered. Um, but yeah, I think we're going to head over towards Chinatown and go and see from there. But yeah, that's going to be it for today. I managed to get it sorted out, not to get you on a ferry, in it. Oh, <laughs> bad, is it? Got like your little screen here that you, know, you have to like go that way, mate. <laughs> But for you, Joe, I just walked, like, walked this about so the kids can sort like... Oh yeah, maybe I should fucking do this in the light so you can actually see where I'm going. Yeah, you're not going to be able to see jack shit. <laughs> ah, fuck it. Do it when I'm sober. Since I've arrived, it's just been massively busy trying to sort everything out. You know, I've met a couple of friends called Aaron and uh, Neddy. I've known them for quite a lot of years. And, you know, just getting this first part of the plan into action. Um, before I left, I sort of uh, was contacting uh, Car Sales, which is sort of like an Australian auto trader, to try and sort a vehicle out. Because I wanted my own vehicle so I could travel really much where I wanted to go um, so why I'm on the highway driving back is because literally I've just bought a car I flew up to Brisbane yesterday um, and I bought a Nissan Pathfinder it's a two, year 2000 3.3 litre V6 and it's got um, a roof tent on it a side awning a load of camping gear um, and I thought, you know what, that would be ideal for me. Get a few other bits and pieces, and then I've got the freedom to go about, camp where I want, drive where I want to. I haven't really got to worry so much about booking into hotels. And you know, and also, it's going to keep the cost down, which, you know, I'm on a budget the same as everyone else that goes traveling. You know, I'm not a multi-millionaire or anything. Um, you know, and obviously, it gives me a chance as well to get sort of off the beaten path a bit. So, you know, that's, generally me and what I'm doing here. Um, the car itself, I paid $4,750 for it. It's done 292,000 kilometers. Um, it's just been serviced. Um, but it's like anything, buying a car is a bit of potluck really. Um, I've done my research on this a bit and it seemed like a good car. And from driving it back from Brisbane, I've done about 500 kilometers in it so far. And yeah, it's, pretty cool actually to be honest I'm really pleased with it um, haven't tried out the roof tent or anything like that yet um, I sort of stopped off yesterday in Paradise uh, Paradise Beach surf, or sorry Surfers Paradise Palm, uh, Palm Beach um, probably around about 150k down from Brisbane on the Gold Coast and stayed there last night and sort of jump back on the road this morning to get back down to Sydney. I left all my stuff there. Um, 
bit of hard work to sort of like bring everything up in one go to Brisbane just for the day. So yeah, I'm mean, really quite pleased. Um, I mean, my plan on this trip is just to travel about, really. Go to sort of lots of different weird and wonderful places, meet some people, you know, and just enjoy myself, really. Um, the way I travel is very much see where things take me. I'm not really a great planner. Um, I'm not saying there's a right or wrong way to do traveling. Don't think I am, you know. Everyone does it their own way. Um, some people like to have everything planned out to the last sort of minute of what they want to do. That's not me. I'm much more of a, you know, jump in the car, see where I end up type of person. Um, and that suits me. Um, the actual vlog itself is called The Chaos Theory. And the reason for that is I do seem to get myself into some weird and wonderful situations. Not all chaotic, some funny, some bad, some serious, you know. I just think I'm one of them people that, you know, just does that. You know, again, everyone's different. Um, before I come away here, you know, I the usual sort of, don't do it, you're mad, why are you doing that? Um, you know, you're too old, you're too fat, you're having a midlife crisis, you know. And then I had another group of people, all like over friends, saying to me, you know, do it. Just, you know, you've got this opportunity, take it with both hands and just run with it. And that's what I decided to do. Um, you know, to be honest, to say that I wasn't a bit apprehensive and sort of a little scared about it, you know, I'd be lying, because I was. It's, you know, I'm a single bloke traveling around Australia on my own. So, yeah, I mean, it is a bit daunting sometimes, but, you know, I just try and keep to remembering that it's gonna be an amazing experience, you know, and it's what I make it. So, you know, just try and do every day, try and do something different, try and do something a little bit that scares you, a little bit that enjoys you, you know, and yeah, just try and make the best of this opportunity. Um, again, another reason why this vlog, vlog, whatever you call it, come about was, you know, it gives my kids a really good chance to sort of see what their dad's doing in Australia. Now, I'm not into social media. I don't really do Facebook that much, or Instagram, Twitter. Um, never been one for posting lots of things, and I've never really done any type of videoing before in my life. So, you know, it's gonna be a bit rough and ready. I'm gonna have to sort of learn and teach myself how to do a bit of video editing, and I'm hoping the more I do it, you know, the better it comes with the editing and stuff like that. As for the content, all I can promise you is nothing is going to be staged or planned or anything like that. It purely is going to be me travelling about with a camera um, and just filming what I'm doing. I'm not pretending that this is going to be some type of travel vlog where I'm giving you all weird and great advice about what you should be doing and how you should be doing it. Because to be honest with you, I don't know myself. I'm literally doing these things and finding these things out as I'm doing them. So, you know, any advice that I might give on this, please don't think this is sort of like expert travel advice because it's not. It's just me doing my thing, you know. And also, as I said earlier, everybody travels differently. There is no right or wrong way to do this. So, do it how you feel comfortable, and that is what I'm gonna do. Um, there is gonna be moments where there's gonna be swearing, there is gonna be moments where you're gonna probably see me falling about a bit pissed and drunk, having a good time, you know, but again, if that offends anybody, don't watch. You know, I'm not trying to do this as a career, or as I said, as advice, I'm just purely doing it so, my friends and family can see what I'm doing. And from the outset, I've said, if I get any more than two people watching it, which is my son and daughter, then I'm a happy man. You know, anyone else from that um, who watches it and enjoys it, you know, I'm really pleased. One thing that I would ask though, 
you know, if you don't like it, please don't be texting into me saying, oh yeah, this is crap. If it's crap, don't watch it, you know. If someone has got some really good tips and information for me of places to go and see, love to hear from you. You know, really would. I mean, I'm not pretending that I know everything about Australia. I don't. So if people can turn around to me and say to me, Paul, go here, it's fantastic, you really like it, it's a really cool place, please let me know. As I said, that, that would really help me out. Um, in a little while, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull over and we're gonna do a bit of filming just to show you the car that I've bought and you know what it's about. Um, I think that'd be sort of like a bit interesting. But as I said from the start, I don't know what I'm doing. Really don't know what I'm doing with this video stuff. So if I'm talking a load of crap, rambling a little bit, you know, that's just me being me. Right, so, do a bit of filming of the car. This is the car we bought. As you can see, it is a Nissan Pathfinder, and it's in the year 2000. And as you can see, it's, been jacked up a little bit got the off-road tires on it which is quite good and considering you know it's 18 years old it's not bad nick and up the top there you can obviously see the roof tent and awning and you say it's got a tow bar on the back and inside here this is my camping gear, so I think we'll go through that more when we have a chance to take it all out, but this here, this here is my fridge freezer, which you can see in there, We've got some cooking bits in, and there's an extra petrol can, and a water butt there, and again, a cool box with some more sort of cooking utensils and stuff in, this is a chair, there's another sort of tent awning now and in here there's like a nice cooking stove which uses these gas canisters there is again sort of like a mat for the floor there so yeah all in all really quite pleased with it so yeah around the side here this is the awning that comes out at the side. But yeah, as you can see, all in all, not a bad vehicle. One thing that is most quite important with these cars is these. These are called kangaroo bars. And the reason why they're called kangaroo bars is when the kangaroos jump out, that stops the kangaroo smashing the whole front of your car in because some of these kangaroos are pretty big and when you hit one of them at 50 mile an hour you are going to know about it but yeah so all in all really pleased with it so we'll just have a little look inside and as you can see inside got my bottles of drink there and other little bits and pieces now I'm starting to make the car at home there's another camera that we've been talking into there and you know As you can see it is pretty pretty clean and tidy for a 20 well an 18 year old car but yeah overall as you can see now this car here this cost me as i said 4750 pounds but you know i think i've been very lucky with this um you could pay a lot more and get a lot worse or you could pay a lot less and get some, something that's maybe a bit better um it all depends what you're looking for at the end of the day um you know you can see on here that there is some sort of scratches and marks on it you know but overall you know for what it is pretty cool 